Good day everyone, my name is Cam Jack and welcome back to the channel. As you can probably tell by the title, we're doing another video on the Space Age development progress. Today is Wednesday, January 16th, this is being uploaded, and we got a new blog post by Marek Rosa, who is the CEO of Keen Software House, also known as the developer of Space Engineers, for those of you who don't know. Now, if you do want to go read this yourself, I will leave it all down below in the description to where you can go and read it. I am going to skim through it today, pick out some key points, discuss them, and also chat about the development live stream that was just done live on twitch.tv slash keen community network. In the stream, uh, Joel and the other community manager, Jesse, went over some of the new blocks that added to the game, chatted about them, and showed off a few of the new scenarios. I pulled some important notes out of that stream to save you having to chuck through all of the uh, two hours, I think it is, so you can either watch this or go watch the stream. Again, links to these pages are down below in the description but let's just jump straight into it all right so marco's blog post is up on screen now as you can see he chats about how the survival overhaul is one of the most important features for space engineers and one of the most top priorities over the last six years they've uh, executed the original vision which apparently hasn't changed i thought it might have been six years but hey ho apparently it's not the survival overhaul is one of the biggest overhauls because how the main priority is making sure the sandbox elements work properly this would go back to the point where mark previously spoke about changing spaces less from sandbox more into the game which kind of received mixed feedback. Again, if you do have some feelings towards this update, feel free to let me know down below in the comment section as I would love to discuss it with you. Anyway, back of this, the update, or aka the major survival overhaul, it's regarded as like a real game change on how it changes the game. Things like progression and a tech tree has been implemented, which is receiving mixed reviews so far, but uh, let's proceed on. So there's a couple of public tests for the community taking place. One is tomorrow, 17th of January. Uh, if you want more information, I'll leave it down below in the description and you can head over and join our Discord where we might be hosting a public test server for this update. I will also be streaming it on twitch.tv slash captainjackyt. So if you want to come watch me check out the latest update, feel free to head over and give us a view. Anyway, they're running up apparently some more community tests over the coming weeks, so if you don't get tomorrow's one, you've got next week and the week after, they might be extended to the weekend, which is quite cool. Now, they've touched on almost every survival element in this update. New blocks such as the hydrogen engine, the wind turbine, survival kit, and small battery are being introduced to the game. Obviously, we saw them in the teasers in the last couple of weeks, um, or the last week. We've now obviously got them confirmed as coming a part of the game, which is quite cool. Along with this, they're renaming the blast furnace to the basic refinery, as well as adding a new spawn system. In addition to the basic refinery, is you also have a basic assembler, which is like a one block assembler, and can only build, I think, up to um, some uh, assault rifle magazines and stuff like that, and some batteries or power cells. So yeah, it's kind of limited to what it can build, which is quite cool. So the new spawning system has been implemented. I'll chat more about this in a bit, but it's basically where they've tried to eliminate death traveling, which is often misused in space since apparently. As somebody who runs a public server, I can definitely agree with that. So now spawn options will now appear uh, for each planet in the world, meaning you can directly spawn onto that planet, which is quite cool. And you're not going to have to drop like 15 minutes into the atmosphere. You'll get dropped like 100 meters or 50 meters above the surface and just descend down in the game faster and you get started, which is quite nice. Parts of the spawn options is the survival kit adds as uh, access sort of like a medical bay and has sort of like basic refinery and assembler tools inside the survival kit. Only basic stuff, it can't do everything in the game, like you can't make a jump drive out of it. But the idea behind this is it's gonna help new players, space engineers, progress nicely. Uh, I know this has received mixed reviews, especially from veteran players who say I don't really see the use of this. I can kind of agree, but when Spaces is going forward to, you know, try and entice more players into the game, the route they're taking does make a lot of sense. And plus, if you've played Space News for X amount of years, I think you should be able to know how to do it all by now. But uh, that's my opinion. I'm looking forward to your opinion down below in the comments and what you think of progression. So far, a vocal, uh, a lot of people have asked for the feature not be included or be turned off, especially on my servers. But uh, I'm interested in your opinion, so uh, make sure to note them down. So it chats more about the progression tree. It's here to help new players get familiar with the game as we originally thought. Uh, it basically hides some blocks in the menu screen and tells you the blocks you need to build in order to unlock them. Off the top of my head, apparently to build a jump drive you need to build an antenna. I don't know what the correlation is between them, but I suppose it's coordinates and stuff like that or GPS. I suppose so, but meh. The essential blocks are enabled from the start, so you've got your survival kit, your basic refinery and assembler. Um, then groups of blocks can be unlocked on the way, kind of like how progression would work. It's quite cool. Again, something which uh, I'm on the fence about. I'm not sure whether I'm going to love it or hate it as someone who plays Survivor quite a bit. 
but uh, I'll test it out in the actual test phase of the game tomorrow, and I'll let you know what I think of it at some point next week when we sit down to discuss the test to Space Engineers. I think it's gonna be quite cool. Obviously, if you are in creative mode, you can um, turn this on and off, so you don't actually have to, you know, have a progression tree. I think they did say it was toggable, uh, or toggable, so you basically, if you're running a dedicated server, you can turn off the progression and stuff like that, which is quite cool, as I know some people are not a fan of it. It does make a lot of sense, so uh, I can't wait to see that there. Yes, there you go. I do have it in my notes. In the stream, Zockley and Jesse confirmed it is an option and it can be disabled in the world setting. So there we go. Uh, no need to worry if you're not a fan of progression. Now, they also chat about updating the planetary and asteroid voxel textures. It looks more realistic and contains ore veins blended with the surrounding material. Trees, vegetations and rebalanced locations have all been updated as well as the in-game help. So therefore, we have seen a bit of an overhaul to that, which is quite nice. Uh, there's a set of new goals and objectives which has also been introduced, as well as a couple of new survivals as we originally thought. Uh, one is called Learning to Survive, so if you've just bought Space Engineers, which I'm sure some of you have, and want to understand how to play the game, then Learning to Survive is the one you're once again to play. If you're a veteran player like myself and many others, you may be like the scenario which is called Never Surrender, which is basically where you have to defend against a lot of drones. Yes, I know the drone army, they did make a mention of that in the stream, but hey, it's going to be quite fun. I want to try the Never Surrender at some point because obviously I know how to play Space Engineers, surprisingly, so it's going to be pretty interesting to check out. So along with uh, new scenarios, they've also updated the cargo ships and encounters, which is yes. Uh, we've been asking this for a while now, finally it's been updated. I'm not sure how well it's been updated yet, as it wasn't shown off much on the stream, but uh, we'll have to jump in and check it out at some point, but it's presumably quite cool. So yeah, that's apparently been adjusted, um, the advanced settings, so yeah. Apparently Steam Workshop integration is also getting improved as somebody like myself who uploads a lot of ships, amazing. Uh, along with that there's small PCU changes, game chat, building changes and new voxel generation systems which will probably, as it says here, display voxels properly and make the LED transition smoother. So along with this update we're getting a lot of performance and stuff like that and sort of quality of life changes as well which is quite nice as to be expected with a major survival overhaul. Uh, so they say with the new southern areas being introduced in spaces, the game now has new goals and challenges for players to explore. One of the things I did want to talk about, as um, that's probably it for Mark's blog post, I noted down here is how dedicated servers, as we previously spoke about, now have a faster respawn selection. When logging into a dedicated server, you can now actually select um, a faction to join before having to previously spawn in the spacesuit, join a faction, kill yourself and respawn. Well, now from the home screen, you can directly select up a faction which is going to be awesome for the players who play on my own public servers where we do faction wars. I can't wait to look into that, it's going to be quite cool and hopefully this will improve people's multiplayer experience a lot more. There's obviously now new respawn ships for the games and they're equipped with a survival kit which as we discussed acts as a sort of miniature respawn area. I don't think this is fully getting rid of medical bays just yet as a medical bays is something you're going to want to carry around on your bigger capital ships and stuff like that, not on your small ships. So yeah, that's uh, kind of quite cool, I suggest. But I look forward to having Medical Base still in there, and hopefully their purpose will be redefined at another point. So far, just splitting away from this, I am liking the sound of this update. There is more I want to check out, obviously, in the public test tomorrow, which goes from Thursday to Friday, and might be extended. There were hints of that, but uh, we'll have to check it out tomorrow and see how well the update's actually performing. Anyway, back to the survival kit. Uh, sorry, I was meant to be saying respawn ships. The respawn ships are now different on various planets. So on Earth, you basically land on the planet using a parachute and a couple of atmospheric thrusters. On the moon, you've got a small rover to go around. It's a little bit harder to survive on the moon, basically because you've got no oxygen and a lower form of gravity. And then obviously on Titan, Mars and other places, you've got different respawn ships. Just a mention in the chat of a minute, Rip the Yellow respawn ship. Sadly, she has been de decommissioned and apparently is not in the game anymore and has been replaced by a blue ship. Yeah, there was quite a lot of chatter in the stream about the yellow respawn ship. Shame about that one. Um, someone has to mod that back in at some point. Hopefully, we will not forget the yellow respawn ship. Let me know in the comments if you're passionate for the yellow respawn ship. We should start a petition immediately. Someone put that on the support website. Anyway, survival kit. Uh, I've spoken about this before, but it is synced with a tech tree to ease players into the spaces experience. It will not replace the refinery assembler, so don't worry about that. Uh, obviously, progression is a big thing in the game now. Different blocks have different things to get you to that stage. Now, here's one interesting feature I wanted to chat about a bit more. The spacesuit in the game, this is the thing you practically live in, now has a little bit more purpose. The suit essentially keeps you alive, as you previously told, but it is affected by the environment you're standing in. If you're standing in direct sunlight, you're going to be fine. If you're standing in the freezing cold at midnight, you're actually going to find your energy decreasing a lot more as your space engineer is getting quite cold. And uh, if your energy runs out, you will die from standing in that cold thing. Apparently, according to Joel, the same thing happens if you go towards the center of the Earth, because obviously it gets it's hotter and hotter, the quicker to 
the Earth or any planet for that matter, um, you are going to die as your suit is trying to, you know, keep up that air conditioning. Once you run out of energy, you're dead. I do like how this is handled, and hopefully modders will have a fun time implementing this into their custom planets. Dr. Octogbarnapus, I think I pronounced his name right, is somebody who creates planets like Ravcore, custom lava planets, um, acid planets. Hopefully now this will build into that very nicely, and, you know, spaces will have more of an immersive experience when traveling to different planets. Let me know what you think about down below in the, uh, not the description, the comments, that would be a wise idea. We've chatted about random encounters, now wind, something to focus on, obviously we know the turbines have been added to the game. The wind is fake, weather effects are not currently being added, so it is essentially fake wind. This was confirmed by Jesse, the community manager on stream. They are open to talking about weather effects in the future, so I wouldn't lose hope just yet. However, for this update, it's not going to happen and I don't see it happening in the future. That's just me, but uh, we'll have to see that. The hydrogen engine was talked about and how it provides a different playstyle. This block, apparently, his name might change, so at the minute it is called the Hydrogen Engine, but it uh, could change at any date. So yeah, apparently it's not um, it's not called that at the minute. That's what we were saying, got a bit confused on stream, so I'm not entirely sure about that. Ship LCDs, let's quickly chat about them. Obviously, now you know when you get in a ship cockpit, the LCDs will boot up when you actually turn the ship on. They are not custom currently, as in you can't custom set them. However, um, they are basic things like that. Hopefully, maybe at one point we might expand upon this, so they can be custom, or they could display sort of like the old script sort of feature, where you can tell power and stuff like that. That would be quite good, and if it could get implemented into the ship, it would be quite cool, but I don't see it at the moment, which is a bit of a shame. So there we go, that is most of my notes available from the live stream and spaces development currently. Uh, follow me tomorrow, as we probably will be talking more about the public test for space engineers, as that is going to be quite cool. I'm excited to be jumping in and testing out spaces, and I expect you guys are as well to see how far the game is going in 2019. Marek ends off his blog post, also mentioned the visual script tool has been updated, uh, and all of the scenarios are created in the visual script tool, so therefore you yourself, the player, can actually play with that very soon. It's going to be quite cool. Well, in the meantime, that kind of has been my miniature sort of update video today. I'm sorry for dragging it on, there kind of was a lot to cover. Again, if you are looking for the key important links in Marek Rose's blog post, the Twitch VOD is all linked down below, including my personal social channels where I do talk about spaces quite a lot. If you're looking for a couple of spaces, public servers to join, and a potential test server for tomorrow's environment, head over to my Discord where we're currently hosting two public spaces servers waiting for you to come and join and play with us. It's going to be quite fun. Again, let me know your thoughts and opinions on this update and the test down below in the comment section. I'm eager to chat about it with you. Uh, we're entering a good phase of spaces in a minute, but I'm interested in everyone's feedback, as I know progression is not something everyone is happy with. But uh, yeah, let us know your feedback down below. In the meantime, I've been Captain Jack. Thank you for watching, and I will catch you next time. Goodbye.